Welcome to RSI Help YouTube. I'm your host, Deborah Quilter. And um, we've been taking apart the advice from OSHA and the National Institutes of Health about various aspects of ergonomics. And one thing we haven't uh, covered is the posture of holding the arms forward, holding the limbs forward. And what would happen if you did that for a long period of time? And um, to answer this question, we brought in our medical expert, Dr. Robert Marcuson. He's a San Francisco based hand surgeon who has nearly 40 years of experience and knows the upper extremity like nobody else I know. Um, he's also a clinical professor of surgery at the University of California, San Francisco. So welcome back to the show, Dr. Marcuson. And uh, can you tell us why holding the arms forward is um, what it does to the musculoskeletal system over time? Well, it's really actually, it's, a, it's an incredible multi-layered tapestry that's not just musculoskeletal. You, you have to understand that you know, this wonderful limb of ours is uh, we've got some mechanical things going on. We've got some statically loaded muscle, but we have neurovascular supply inflow and outflow. And so let's put, let's put this uh, poor little downtrodden limb forward. I'll try and adjust and get back to a reasonable perspective. The, as, as I do so in reach, I'm engaging the pectoral muscle over top of the brachial plexus. If I'm head forward, now you've got this brachial plexus, the LA freeway system of nerves going from spinal cord out to upper limb, branching, ramifying into our precious peripheral nerves. But I'm gonna tighten that. I'm gonna put traction on it this way and this way, tighten up the pec minor, which is over top of that brachial plexus. And I'm gonna reach, and then I'm gonna statically load muscles that were not intended to be loaded that way, whether or not I'm head forward. And so, as grandma said at the dinner table, straighten up, or as we say, straighten up and fly right. And that's very important because if you load, now I'm turning. So if you load this, extend this, then you've defied all of human evolution, which is we are a bipedal species, free-handed. So we won't, don't want to devolve into an amphibian reptilian posture. We're not quadrupeds. Right, so uh, you've asked about forward limb, but you really can't separate that from forward head because you can more than triple the forces on the spine as you go forward with, with your neck. And a, a wonderful, uh, unfortunately inadequately read book by great, great hand therapists, Terry Hansford and Michelle Reiner, hard to get, but Biomechanics Illustrated They've got wonderful pictures showing the perils of a head forward, limb forward posture, what it's gonna to do to spine, what it's gonna to do to brachial plexus, but wait, there's more. Because as soon as, as soon as you're doing that, you're increasing all of this tension in these incredible regions, you're statically loading muscles. Let me give you a real world example, although nobody goes to a movie anymore. If you're in a movie theater and a prankster of a projectionist decided not to show the movie straight ahead, but to show it on the right or left screen. So you go like this for an oh, hour and a half, two hours, and then see how you feel. Then he switches over here and see how you feel. We were not set up to make such imbalance of our, not only musculotendinous, but neurovascular structures. Yeah, that actually happened to one of my clients. He was a, um, an accountant. And in order to see his client, he moved his computer over to the side. He had horrible neck pain. I actually um, heard of a case where a person was prescribed a very strong non steroidal anti-inflammatory drug when all he had to do was move his monitor in front of him so he wasn't torqued. But I'd like to show you a photograph. Uh, it's a picture that I got from OSHA's, I believe it was OSHA's website. And this is the kind of thing that, you know, usually people can actually have their arm up higher if they're, if they have their mouse misplaced. And I don't even recommend the mouse period. But look at how this model is violating. You can't really use a computer. Her head is going to go forward to see the screen. 
And it looks like she's either holding her arm forward or resting it on that armrest, both of which are a bad idea. Resting the arm on the armrest could lead to a nerve injury on the ulnar nerve. And um, so I'm just very surprised that the people who are allegedly in charge of health and safety at the computer are recommending these sorts of positions. Right, it's, it's manifestly obvious if you've ever dissected a human body, which I do every few months, uh, fresh cadaver material since I teach on a couple of faculties. And so we're taking things apart to look at not only static post-mortem anatomy, but also dynamic anatomy of stretch, stress, strain, compression, and so on. And it's fascinating to put people in typing positions, playing the violin, so on, so on, and understand that it's not just stuff in a textbook it's stuff that has to live and breathe function conduct an impulse to a muscle and send some sensory feedback and also keep things vital with arterial inflow venous lymphatic outflow so uh, i want to say something else and a good simple prevention and it'll be a slight bit of camera shake as i show you my own setup would you like to see how I avoid head forward and limp forward postures? Yes, I would. <laughs> okay, so here we go. We're on a little bit of a shaky camera tour, getting real. Well, we, we can't get much more real than actually putting people in the positions that they're gonna be working in. Okay, so here is man at work, okay? I have a junky little gamer's keyboard, but I seldom touch it because I'm using voice recognition software. And I hope you can see two vertically placed monitors Yes. If I were a, a Wall Street analyst, I'd have had landscape to look at spreadsheets. But you notice they're vertically placed, and they're really large. I'd rather save my pennies for that than a, an expensive meal, because here we go. This is dead simple. So I can sit four, five, six feet away and see my text, see my numbers, and never have to strain to see it. I don't want to be here trying to see something. I want to be way out here. Yeah. And so be, beyond that, the upright posture is facilitated and thanks to you. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay. So there we there we go. And I, this isn't a plug for a seat, but there there it is, a QOR three sixty. But uh -huh. wait, there's more. The last thing I want to do is use my hands on perimeter keys. Yeah. Whoa, foot pedals. Isn't that nice? Okay, so yeah. I've actually got another set. So I can do and assign these things to avoid perimeter key use and so on. As I get a ton of work done, and obviously I'm working by voice recognition only for the past, I'd say since October 2017. Last thing I would do as English first or second language person would be to use my hands to generate text and numbers because I don't need to, nor do I want to. So I'll put this back in its holster, but you've got the idea. Vertical monitors that are large, sitting back comfortably. Yes. No need for back support, never any slouching, no head forward, no limb forward positioning. Very smart, very smart. So ideally, to use the upper limb appropriately, we would be sitting with our free brachial plexus because the shoulders would be wide, the shoulder blades would be nested firmly against the, the ribs in the back, and the arm would be relaxed. So when I'm relaxed, my elbow is actually at my waist. It's not forward at all. And I can feel, if I bring my arm, I can feel the tension in my neck and shoulders. Seems like um keeping this forward limb position for prolonged periods is just not a good idea it's a very bad idea some people are set up to do that perhaps they might have enough uh, clearance for all of the vital structures through their fibromuscular pathways bony pathways and so on to get out to fingertips for use and feedback but why would you stress it i mean obviously the whole human quest again is bipedal free-handed populating the globe doing incredible things with their hands and brains. But for me, it's form, function, fit, and failure avoidance. That's never not been my credo yeah. from childhood. And I never exploit my own anatomy because I frankly don't like pain. Well, 
that seems to be a good note to end on because I think that's going to be the title of one of our upcoming episodes is Form, Function, and Fit. Um, so I want to thank you for coming on the show and enlightening us about the forward limb posture, Dr. Markison. And I hope we have you back soon. Stay safe, pain-free, and comfortable. Thank you.